Hi and welcome to my channel. My name is Betsy and I'm a nurse of over 40 years with a passion for helping people. I want to help people find a calm in the midst of their crisis by providing education, motivation, and inspiration using my unique combination of gifts in nursing, safety and risk, wellness, and biblical understanding, and along with using stories of other people's lives as well as my own. Today, I'm going to talk to you about how Jesus is different than any other religious figure ever. Hi, so welcome as we talk about what makes Jesus different than any other religious figure ever. So one of the first things I'm going to tell you is that obviously he was somebody that was very, very, um, I don't want to say spectacular. He was such a person, man, and who I believe God, holy human, fully human, fully divine, that actually history for the Julian and Gregorian calendar was split into BC before Christ and after Christ, ad no domini, which means in the year of the Lord. Now the Jewish calendar does not have that. They put their calendar beginning at the beginning of creation and have just continued to move that calendar forward and it's based on uh, lunar and solar cycles and they have 12 to occasionally 13 months so on occasion they have a leap month i don't want to go all into the specifics of that but that's how they and of course there are some other calendars but really for the most being is that jesus made such an impact in this world that our dating system is based on his presence, his life, his death, and his resurrection. So that's one. Secondly, he is the God. He is both God and man. He is wholly divine and he is whole, fully human. So in God, he has the attributes of God. And it says in Hebrews, the, in the Bible, it also says in Colossians and in other places, that Jesus is the physical and exact representation of the Father and his characters. It says actually that he's like an imprint of him. And so he is God. When I think of God, there's a lot that think, oh my gosh, he's God, and they're giving him three people. Is he three-headed? What is he? So when I think of God and the triune God, and I go back to creation where God had said, and in the original language, let us make him an image. Who is us? It's the three different personhoods of God. And he is the religious figure that is fully God and fully man. What do I mean by fully man? He came in the image of a baby. It is historically correct that Jesus was born on this earth. He had a mother and a father. Sometimes we try to say, oh, the Bible, because it's a religious book. Poo, poo, you know, it's a book of myths. It's actually a historical account. And so the Gospels are actually eyewitness accounts written by different people of course, believers, but also you have Josephus, who was a Jewish historian, who also spoke about this Jesus being there. And if you want to go deeper into this, you can actually go and read books that have been written by this, such as Lee Strobel, The Case for Christ. Lee Strobel was a journalist that um, very well-respected, awarded journalist in Chicago that did stories and research into crime and his wife became a Christian and he wanted to debunk her. So he set out on a journey to prove her wrong and ended up becoming a Christian. There's also Josh McDowell, who he too tried to prove that Christianity was fake. And he wrote a book called More Than a Carpenter. So I would encourage you to 
look up those um, people, Josh McDowell, more than a carpenter, and Lee Strobel, The Case for Christ, and actually, but they both have move, various movies out too um, that you could watch as well. So just encouraging you to not just sit and think there is no God and um, so many that have, you know, what really troubles me is so many that have been raised in Christian homes or walk the path and they think that Christ isn't who he is. It's like, you know what? I don't know that you've really gotten to know him instead of know about him. There's a big difference between knowing about somebody and actually knowing them. So that's so important. It's a difference between um, relational Christianity and service-related and institutional Christianity where you do, do, do. God wanted relationship, and that's what Jesus came to do. So a big factor of what's different between Jesus and all other religious figures is all the other religious figures were like, they died. They never rose again. And guess what? They didn't suffer for the sins of the people that they're supposed to be helping. I can't think of a one of them. They are just like, oh, ascend to where I am, or follow what I tell you, or do this and do that, or take the road and do these things, and you'll come to a good place, or you'll be like me, or you'll get to paradise, or you'll get here, or you'll get there, or you'll stop having to rebirth yourself, and karma, and all these different things. And believe me, I studied those before I was 17. And it was like, eh, I don't think so, eh. Even though I came from a Roman Catholic background, I knew about God. I didn't know Jesus. I didn't have a relationship. I thought I did. And I thought that biblically-based people and some of these people in church just had a better one. But I can tell you, I didn't know. Him because when I came to know him, and all these 45 years, now, I know I know him. There is no doubt in my heart. And there is no doubt in my heart that I'm going to be with him once I pass from this body. I'm going to go up to heaven and be with him forever. And that's for my mother and father right now and many others that I know. So that's another thing. Jesus died. God gave himself in the form of his son, a physical man, who was tempted in all ways like us to sin, but he didn't sin. And that's why he could be the perfect sacrifice for sin. I know you don't get all this, but I'm going to be talking about that on another video. As to why did Jesus even have to die for sin? What do you mean a perfect sacrifice? What What is all this about? Why shedding his blood? Ooh, it's so bloody. Did he have to go on the cross? I'm going to be answering that in another video. But right now, I just want you to know about the different ways of Jesus and why he's so different. Another thing is, all the other people, all those other people, they were sinners, okay? They had bad things said about them. Mm-hmm. You may not be able to find some of it. Some of them, it's very obvious, right? But Jesus, he's always been called a good man. Now, here's the most curious thing. This is what C.S. Lewis said and what I thought. How could Jesus be a good man and a liar at the same time? Nobody likes liars, not even wicked people. They know that deception's evil. You can't tell me they don't. They just do it because they want their way. But everybody knows and hates lying, okay? They know it's wrong, right? So, anyway, so these people that say they're all this and all that. They are truly lying. But Jesus, he was a good man. And people have spoke about it. If he was a good man, did you ever think, if he's a good man, why don't I believe that he is who he said he is? He said he was the son of God many, many times. Mm-hmm. He sure proved it by the way he was. He loved everybody. 
And the only people he got mad at were those Pharisees, those religious people that made people jump through hoops and everybody had to do this and that to earn their way to God. And Jesus came because he knew that none of us could get it right. My gosh, they'd been going through the um, all the sacrifices and all the shedding of animals' blood and all these different things. And even his own people that he came to save and rescued out of Egypt couldn't get it right. Now, if they couldn't get it right, how were any of the rest of us supposed to get it right? No. The commandments came to show, and the law that was given by Moses came to show people that, gosh, we're wicked. We are sinners, and we are in need of a Savior. And then who did? Who came? Jesus. And he said he was his Savior. He didn't come into the world, he said, to condemn the world. Because guess what? The world was already condemned. Oh, all you have to do is look at the behavior of men. Just read the Old Testament. Just look back at all the wars, even on the secular um, books and texts and things like that. And look even now, today. Don't tell me people are good from the base. No, we have the capacity of good. But at age two and three, you can start to see the evil start to, nature starting to take over. Mine, mine, mine. And you can surely see it as adults. Do we have capacity for great good? Yes. But there's always that sin nature. And that's what separates us from God. And that's why Jesus had to come. So Jesus was either a liar or he was a good man. And good men don't lie. So you're going to have to make the choice. So next week, I'm going to be talking more about Jesus, about his life, about how can we trust him, about why did he have to come anyway, and why did he have to die. I'm going to be talking about sin and repentance and what that means. I mean, what is this thing, right? Thanks for joining me this week. And before you go, I'd like to say a blessing over you. It's from the book of Numbers in the Old Testament, chapter 6, verses 24 through 26. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Thanks again for joining me. Until next time.